good to be with you on the program tonight. Uh, we are going to be looking in uh, the Bible at Romans chapter 16 and verse 17 tonight. We're going to talk about uh, division. We're going to talk about uh, the tool of Satan to divide, how it works and what it does. We're going to look at our nation tonight and we're going to see that uh, some is suggesting, and maybe rightfully so, that we're at the point of a civil war taking place in this country. I want to, uh, I want to spend the time to look tonight of who is doing what and do what the Bible says, mark them. Not only who is causing the trouble today, but who has caused all of the trouble in this country since the day it was founded. Looking in Romans chapter 16, verse 17, listen to these words closely. Paul says, now I beseech you, that's I beg you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. With those good words and fair speeches, they deceive the heart of the simple. The word simple in the passage of scripture means the ignorant, and it carries the word stupid, the stupid. People who can be moved about and led like sheep to a slaughter simply by well put together words. The Bible is telling us here to mark those who bring division. Now Paul is talking here specifically about biblical doctrine and the church. But you have to understand that division works its work no matter where it's at. And the tools of division, be it in a church, or in a house, or in a nation, or in a business, are always the same. These tools of division, which is for the purpose of conquering, are always from the mouth. It's words. It's slander that is the tool and the chief tool of Satan in this desire to conquer and destroy. Jesus made it absolutely clear. Division is the means of conquering of which Satan uses. He said that if a house was divided against itself, he said the house cannot stand. He said if a kingdom was divided against itself, it cannot stand. If a home, a house, a kingdom, a nation, a business, friendships, whatever it is, if it is divided against itself, it cannot stand. Now the Bible commands us and Paul even begs us to do something that, well, most of us are not willing to do because we don't like to confront issues. He said, I beg you, I beseech you to mark them that bring division. They're doing it for what reason? He said that they're doing it for their own belly. That is their own appetites. They bring this division because they want power, so they have to destroy the power that is. They want wealth, and so they stir the masses with great swelling words, beautifully orchestrated and put together. Though they be lies, they stir the ignorant masses to do their bidding and to do their work. That's what Jesus is warning us of. That's what Paul is warning us of. And Paul biblically is begging. That's what beseech means. He is begging us in the church and in all things to mark those that sow division. Again, that's not something we like to do because we do not like to confront. But the only way to set out in front the evil work of division is to mark the ones that's doing it. So I'm going to do that tonight. And I'm not going to just take you into present times of which we live now, but I'm going to take you back through the history of this country and show you that all of the bad trouble that this country has ever known or ever faced has from one, come from one group and one group only, and it is called a Democrat. The Civil War. If you are one who believes, as is commonly taught, that the South is the ones who started the Civil War, and the Civil War was fought because of the South and just because of slavery, well, then you have to say then that the South is the cause of the greatest conflict, brother against brother, 
family against family, a civil war in this country that killed thousands of our brothers and our sisters. If it was caused by the South, if it was caused only over the issues of slavery, as most believe, then it was the Democrats that caused it. One of the greatest tragedies that ever took place in the nation's history was then the killing of Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln moved and did in fact free the slaves. Obviously his heart was in the freedom of all people. He moved to free the slaves. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican and who visited this great tragedy of an American president being shot in the back of the head because of the Civil War, because of the emancipation, because of the freedom of slavery. He was shot in the back of the head and this evil visited to our country by John Wilkes Booth, a Democrat. Not only Abraham Lincoln, but every president in the United States that's ever been shot, ever been assassinated, every one of them were Republicans. You see, Democrat presidents don't get killed in American history. Only Republican presidents get killed in American history. Republicans don't do the killing. Republicans get killed. Now the only president that was not a Republican that got assassinated was John F. Kennedy. But I want you to remember that Mr. Kennedy is the first Democratic president, which would be a staunch conservative today. He was the first Democrat president that went against the Democrat power base. He is the president that sent the FBI and the federal government into Mississippi and Alabama to do away with the Ku Klux Klan. What did Mr. Kennedy get? A bullet in his head. Who did it? Democrats did it. Who killed all the presidents? Democrats did it. Who started the Civil War? Democrats did it and it goes on. All of the civil rights turmoil that took place in the 1960s, dogs being turned loose on people who simply wanted to be able to eat in the same restaurant as white people, all of that violence that we are so very familiar with, all of those attacks, the lynchings done by the Ku Klux Klan, visiting terror upon communities. Few realizes that from the time of the Klan in the mid 1800s till now, a little over 4,000 lynchings of black people has been recorded. Few people realize that the Klan also lynched more than 2,700 whites who created the Ku Klux Klan, the Democrats. You oftentimes hear the name Bull Connor one of the leading figures of the civil rights movement, a Democrat who believed and preached fully in segregation. You can never whip these boys if you don't keep you and them separate. I found that out in Birmingham. You've got to keep the white and the black separate. You can never whip these boys if you don't keep you and them separate. I found that out in Birmingham. You've got to keep the white and the black separate. Bull Connor was a Democrat. How can a Republican be like a Democrat? That was Mr. Connor who just preached segregation. It has to be. But before we go any further, let me show you another man who believes in segregation also. Now, God wants you separated now. God wants you separated now. God wants you separated. That's Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan believes the same thing Bull Connor believed. 
It's difficult to see how two people who believe and want the same thing, the segregation of the races, how they could be against each other. Bull Connor wanted segregation, whites and blacks to be separated. Louis Farrakhan today says not only does he want it, but God wants it. Now, you may remember I've shown you a few times the clip of Malcolm X, who was one of the founding fathers of the Nation of Islam, what Louis Farrakhan presides over now here in America. Malcolm X told that there was a secret meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, between the Nation of Islam, the neo-Nazis, and the Ku Klux Klan to devise a scheme whereby they could create a county or even a certain number of states that could be given to the blacks because all of those groups agreed that they wanted segregation. Why do you see the war and the push between uh, the races today? Democrats. Mr. Farrakhan, he and most all, 98% of all who follows him, if not 100%, votes Democrat. I wonder why. Why would Mr. Farrakhan support the party of Bull Connor? Well, according to Malcolm X, they had the secret meeting. And of course, remember, for telling all that he knew, Malcolm, like Martin Luther King, like Abraham Lincoln, like John F. Kennedy, all that bucked the Democratic Party, well, they got bullets to the head or assassinated. Here's what Malcolm X said concerning the secret meeting between the Nazis and not the Republican Party. The Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan, and the Nation of Islam who are purely Democratic voters. Here's what he said. I mentioned the conspiracy between the Muslims and the right wing in this country. I know for a fact that there is a conspiracy between, among, between the Muslims and the uh, uh, Lincoln Rockwell Nazi and also the Ku Klux Klan. There is a conspiracy. Describe this conspiracy. Well, the Ku Klux Klan made a deal or were trying to make a deal with Elijah Muhammad in 1960 in the home of Jeremiah X, the minister in Atlanta at that time, who was president of the minister in uh, Philadelphia. They were trying to make a deal with him to make available to Elijah Muhammad a county, a size tract of land in Georgia or South Carolina, where Elijah Muhammad could then uh, induce Negroes to migrate and make it appear that his program of a segregated state or separated state was feasible. And uh, to what extent these negotiations finally developed, I do not know, because I was not involved in them beyond the period of uh, December 19, uh, 1960. But I do know that after that, Jeremiah, who was the minister throughout the South, could roam the entire South and the Klan not bother him in any way, shape, or form, nor would they bother any of the black Muslims from then on, nor would the black Muslims bother the Klan. Then there was the tragedy of the death of Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, a Republican. And the bullet that Mr. King got came from the hands of, you guessed it again, a Democrat. You see, Mr. King wanted the nation to be one. That was against the message of the Nazis. That was against the message of the Ku Klux Klan. That was opposed to the message of the Nation of Islam and Louis Farrakhan. That was against the message of the Democrats. You see, the Nation of Islam the Democrats, the Nation of Islam, the KKK, the neo-Nazis, the Democrats, they're all wanting the same thing. And as I've shown you so far, anyone who bucked them has got a bullet. From Malcolm X to Martin Luther King to the first man who, well, freed the slaves, Abraham Lincoln, to the first man who sent the KKK a message loud and clear by seeking the federal government on him. John Kennedy shot dead. You beginning to see the picture? The Word of God says to mark them which bring division 
and the division and the strife that has been visited upon this country from day one, all the hell that this country has suffered has come from the hands of a Democrat. The governors that stood in the way of all the colleges that stood in the door to prevent the entrance of blacks. Who were those governors? Every one of them was Democrats. Then there are the more modern issues. The issue of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. You know, those are the two lending institutions that went broke right at the end of George Bush's and during George Bush's administration. Who brought Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac down? You see, these were lending institutions and they were forced to lend people money who didn't have the means to pay it back. Because this foolish bunch of idiots said, well, crime will go down if you just give somebody a good house to live in. Well, you see, you can't loan money to people that will not repay the loans. You simply can't, period. Well, they did anyhow. The financial soundness of these Democrats. And sure enough, after three separate attempts by George Bush, who ain't my favorite person, but after three separate attempts in the Congress to stop Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and to regulate them, every Democrat in the committees said there ain't nothing wrong with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Mr. Chairman, we do not have a crisis at Freddie Mac. There's been nothing that was indicated this wrong, you know, with uh, Fannie Mae. But I have seen nothing in here that suggests that the safety and soundness of an issue, and I think it serves us badly to raise safety and soundness as a kind of a general shibboleth when it does not seem to me to be an issue. That's just a small clip. Google up. Go to YouTube and Google up. Democrats and Fannie Mae. You'll see the whole court proceedings. And what you'll see in there? is every single Republican said something must be done about Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac or there's going to be severe trouble. And every Democrat said there ain't nothing wrong with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Then Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac collapsed, bringing us the greatest economic problem since the Great Depression. And then the Democrats blamed it on the Republicans. Go and watch it for yourself. Who caused, who signed the bill? A Democrat, pressed and pushed by the Democratic machinery, Bill Clinton. Then just nine years ago, before Barack Obama entered into the presidency, a poll was taken throughout the nation and 67% of Americans, black and white, said race relations had much improved in America. Eight years later, after Barack Obama, the first black president, 69% says now relationships are the worst that they have ever seen after eight years of a black president. How could that even possibly happen? But it did. Then there was the job-killing NAFTA. NAFTA. Signed by who? A Democrat. Bill Clinton. NAFTA, as we were warned by Ross Perot many years ago, if you sign that bill, Ross Perot said all you're going to hear is a giant sucking sound of all the businesses leaving America. Well, after 10 years of NAFTA, not one business had been created in America because of it. Not one dollar made in America because of it, but multiple millions of dollars give to the other countries that we signed NAFTA with, and more businesses left this country and went to other countries, more manufacturers than can even be counted. After 10 years, America had not made one penny off of NAFTA. It stole our jobs. It stole our manufacturing agent. And who did it? A Democrat. The Bible says to mark them that sow division. And now we come to where we are today. This tool of division is being used now against the President of the United States. 
They are accusing him of things. That is just one blatant lie after the other. They accused him of being involved with Russia. They now found out that Russia wasn't a deal. Never produced a penny's worth of evidence. And now the people who put out the emails during the campaign's WikiLeaks finally told our FBI that they could show them the papers that shows that Russia gave them nothing that they received. So the minute they knew that that was no longer news, that it was over, they created Charlottesville, Virginia, and immediately come out calling Donald Trump a racist, saying he would not denounce racist organizations, the Ku Klux Klan. I played you a long clip going all the way back to the year 2000, 17 years before he was even the president, denouncing David Duke, the Ku Klux Klan, and all of them. But the lies still continue. Well, now that the information is coming out that proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's never been any racism with uh, Donald Trump ever in his life, never even been accused of it, received awards by Jesse Jackson for the help that he gave the black community. I do want to express thanks to you, Donald Trump, for being with us. 17 years ago, denounced David Duke by name. Listen. What do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. 17 years ago, he brought the name David Duke up himself, said he's a racist and a bigot. So now they're seeing that Russia won't stick. They're seeing now that their slanderous charges of racism is not going to hold up. So now they're trying to say he's mentally incompetent to hold office, these Democrats. This is a sick, sick bunch. You might want to add to this also, if anybody's in agreement with the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan major argument, one of their major arguments against uh, blacks, was that they were mongrels. The Klan often called blacks and others mongrels. And that became a word that was so, it was a powder keg mongrels. But then listen to Barack Obama on that idiot program called The View. And the interesting thing about the African American experience in this country is that we are sort of a mongrel people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're all kind of mixed up. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> he just called the black race mongrels. And you heard Whoopi on there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> I'm confused. The Klan said it. And they were evil devils and wrong. Obama says it, and everybody on the panel agrees with him. Leaves us with only one question. Was the Ku Klux Klan right, or was Obama wrong? You see, the only ones who has ever sided with this bunch is the bunch that is of them and the bunch that created them. Be they white Democrats, are black Democrats. They do promote, push, and vote for exactly the same thing and then blame it on everybody else. Listen to Mr. Trump as he speaks of the Ku Klux Klan. I don't know if you'll pick it up or not, but there's something said here that proves the man has no idea what he's talking about whenever it comes to the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, I've rejected the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan, from the time I'm five years old, I rejected that. Now, I've listened to Mr. Trump speak of the KKK more than a dozen times where he's recorded in the past. He keeps calling them the Ku Klux Klan, which is a common mistake that's made by people who knows nothing of the Ku Klux Klan. Because, see, it's not the Ku Klux Klan. That's a mistake everybody who makes that is not well informed. The Ku Klux Klan. It's not the Ku Klux Klan. It's the Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan. Then they keep hollering that Donald Trump was endorsed by a grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, David Duke. The simple fact of the business is he renounced David Duke, denounced David Duke 17 years ago. I played it for you. Right here, David Duke tells us he never endorse Donald Trump. Specifically, 
I have said clearly, and every, every time I've talked about his candidacy, that I am not endorsing Donald Trump. So with the lies and the work of slander, the work of the devil himself, who is it that is stirring up and causing all of this conflict? Now, you can't blame Donald Trump when he's being lied on every second of every day. You can't, you can't rebuke the man for defending himself. Nobody in his party is defending him and nobody else. He's got the right to stand up to these lying devils. We finally come to his meeting the other night in Arizona. And you wonder where this loving media who cares so much about minorities and is so concerned about whites attacking blacks and the Ku Klux Klan right outside of Mr. Trump's rally in Arizona the other night. You have leftist Democrats attacking Trump's people. And in this case that you're fixing to see, a black man that voted for Trump is punched by a white man. And you know what? ABC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, ain't nobody, have you seen it? Can you imagine what would have happened if a Donald Trump white supporter would have punched a black Democrat outside? Can you imagine what would be going on right now? But they don't even show it. And now you can see it clear now in the stop picture. A white Democrat punching a black Trump supporter. Can you imagine if a white, the simple fact is black man, they don't care about you. They have led you down a path of destruction for a long, long time. They're not your friends. I promise you that. Remember the one that talked to you when you were lost. He told you what to do. Remember the one that you leaned on. When your world was ending And you were alone Look back at that cross, brother As you walk off Look at the treasures You will have lost A blood-washed family Your children and wife Blessed assurance 